resume in our series on the second coming of Christ, and if you will, if you have your Bibles this morning, we invite you to turn to 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, 13 through 18. This will be our main text for the whole series, even though we're going to be uh, citing a lot of references. 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, 5. 15 through 30 through 18. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with you. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the throne of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. While you have your Bibles open, turn on over to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 57. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy staying? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning as we continue our series on the second coming of Christ, we're dealing with the rapture of the church. And we want to consider the question this morning, when will Jesus come? The manner in which Jesus will come. And tonight we want to look at the second coming is premillennial. Probably the most debated and the most asked question in biblical prophecy has been and is, when will Jesus come? The answer to the question is, we don't know. We do not know the specific day. We do not know the specific time. Uh, as we'll see here that Jesus was with his disciples and they asked him the same question. When will the end of the age come? And he says, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons or the epochs there in the Greek. So our Lord, at least at that day and time, did not uh, say when he would be coming back. He either, due to his self-limitations when he came here to this earth, he either didn't know or he chose not to say. So we don't know when our Lord uh, is coming back. Now, again, when will Jesus come? The answer to the question is, the time of Jesus coming is unknown. We see in Mark 3.32, Of that day and that hour knoweth no man, know not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So at least according to that verse, in that particular context, Jesus says, I don't even know. And that may very well have been the case, because like I say, there was some self-limitation on him when he came the first time. He may not have been privy to that information. Now there's a lot of people, now let me say this before I say what I'm going to say. If you were to ask me when Jesus was coming, I'd tell you the same thing, I don't know. If you were to ask me, uh, if you were to say, Brother Greg, do you believe that we are in the uh, vicinity or the general time frame of the coming of Christ, I'd say yes. But don't ask me, to give you a specific date, because I can't. If our Lord did 
not answer the question, then I'm not going to. Now, there's a lot of people over the years, and I guess you could call them false teachers, that have tried to take the Scripture and try to fit it into some prophecy scheme trying to guess the exact day, trying to guess the exact hour when Jesus will come. And guess what? They've been wrong. The founder of Jehovah's Witnesses, I believe was a Tazwell, three different times, I believe 1916, sometime in the 20s and maybe in the 30s, he made the announcement, now Jesus is coming at such and such a day, and I want everybody, I want you to sell all your possessions and let's gather on the mountain and we'll meet Jesus when he comes. Guess what happened? Uh, should I say, guess what did not happen all three times? Jesus did not come. And so what did he have to do? He had to go back and resume his prophecy scheme. See, you can't do that. Uh, you just can't take specific scriptures or timelines and say Jesus Christ is going to come such and such a time, such and such a day and year. You just can't uh, do it. People that do this, they wait in vain. The student of the Word is not to set dates, but what are we to do? We're to pray, we're to watch, and be ready for the soon return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Nothing that says He couldn't come today. Nothing that says he couldn't come tomorrow. We just do not know. But I will say this again. And for the seems like for the past three or four years, and I'm not the only one that feels this way. A lot of other greater men of God than me, or greater people of God than me, feel something's different. We feel that <coughs> Jesus is coming. So we're in the vicinity of it, folks. We're closer than we ever have been. I'll say that. Just don't ask me a specific day. Now Paul, he warned about false teachers setting dates of Christ's return. He was writing there to the church in Thessalonica. And he wrote, he says, Of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord, and by the way, that's a big thing, check your minor prophets. The day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now hold on to that thought. We're going to see that in more detail later. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now Paul is not contradicting the message of Jesus uh, that he gave to his disciples. Jesus was answering the questions of his curious disciples who expected a powerful earthly king to be, to be set up when Jesus was present with them. And they had asked him, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Acts 1 6. And what did he say? He said, Such perfect, such knowledge belongs to God. He didn't give an answer. <coughs> now, Paul, he was writing to heartbroken, bereaved Christians who had to, uh, been falsely. Uh, uh, instructed by teachers of the era. They had been told by these false teachers that the second coming had already come and that they was left behind. So that would upset me too. And Paul was reassuring them saying that, that the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in not. And when people are saying peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them. And he further encouraged them by reminding them that they were children of light, children of the day, not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore they should watch and be sober. 
1 Thessalonians 5, 5 and 6. Now folks, this morning, if anybody tells you, or if you're listening to some teaching or doctrine that says, I can tell forth the exact day of our Lord and Savior's return, don't pay them any mind. Get away from them. They don't know. I don't know. You don't know. But I think it's safe to listen to godly men and women. And I've talked to a lot of them. We were talking about the cemetery yesterday. About some of the things that has happened in our country. And all three of us that were talking agreed the book is being fulfilled and Jesus is coming. The stage is being set. We just don't know exactly when. Now, <clears> the <throat> second Corinthians 11, 13, or 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Now listen to this. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You know, folks, a lot of people have a misconception, and we've seen a lot of these pictures The Satan's are doomed with a, he's red and got this forky tail and got this pitchfork and running around and just an ugly looking beast. That's not Satan. Satan's an angel of light. Satan or Lucifer was the son of the morning. He was the crown and achievement of God's angels. He was a beautiful thing. Evil is couched a lot of times in the most beautiful package that you could ever get. You know, on Christmas morning, you see the pretty gifts all wrapped in nice, pretty wrapping. Sometimes you hate to open them, don't you? Well, that's the way Satan is. He's got a pretty wrap. But when you tear it loose, man, you won't like what you see. But anyway, uh, Satan is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to the works. Beware of false teachers. Paul had to battle them in his day. John had to battle them. And they're all right. If they go to contrary to the Word of God, then don't listen. <clears throat> don't listen. Well, the Bible does not tell us when Jesus will come. But it does uh, tell us the manner or the way in which Jesus will come. The rapture will be a surprise. Now imagine if you will. CNN, Fox, all the big cable. Albums. When that day happens, they're going to be coming on with a news alert. Miriam's disappeared. People all around the world, people all around the country have suddenly vanished, suddenly gone. No explanation. Have they been kidnapped? Have terrorists struck once again? That's what they're going to say. I'm thankful. I won't be here to listen to There will be no announcements in the newspaper or the radio. TV as to when the rapture of the church will take place. Now we're in hurricane season and I'm glad that they make the announcement to when the hurricane is coming or when the th thunderstorm is coming. They'll give you advance warning. No advance warning with the rapture of the church. It just ain't going to happen. Now Jesus gave us signs as to the end of the age. Read the 24th and 25th of Matthew. 
Some of these I'll get into in just a minute. And in, in the future messages. Uh, you know, we have advanced warnings for big storms, for tornadoes, for hurricanes. But again, there will be no announcement made by man concerning the coming of Jesus in the rapture. In fact, the announcement has already been made. What announcement? Watch therefore. Be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Matthew 24, 42 through 44. I may say that again. Watch therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. The warning has been given. The warning has been given. <clears throat> now the next thing we want to see, Jesus will come as a thief. Behold, now listen to this, I come as a thief, blessed is he that watcheth. Revelation 16 and 15. The Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. 1 Thessalonians 5. Why is the rapture of the church? Why is the coming of Jesus in the air? Keep in mind now, it's in two parts. The first part of it will be the, the coming of Jesus in the air, the rapture of the church, the rapture of the saints, the rapture of the church. There, Jesus will not come to the earth. But if you go over, over to the 19th chapter of the book of Revelation, you see that Jesus will come personally to the earth. And he'll do battle. He'll set up his kingdom. Uh, he will bind <coughs> Satan a thousand years. Why is the coming of Jesus in the rapture compared to the coming of a thief? Now the reason is easy to understand when we consider how and why a thief comes and what he takes and what he leaves behind. Now let's suppose, and I hope none of us are wrong, but let's suppose the thief comes and robs you. Now if you've seen the news report, sometimes we've got some pretty stupid, dumb thieves. I mean, they say some of them practically uh, made the announcement, hey, I'm going to rob your house. But if you got a smart thief, do you think that he's going to be so stupid as to say, oh, uh, Brother Gene, I'm going to rob your house tonight. He'd be pretty stupid, wouldn't he? <laughs> no, they don't say that. They do it unannounced and by surprise. And that will be the manner <coughs> in which our Lord comes. Now the reason is easy to understand when we consider how and why a thief comes and what he takes and what he leaves behind. He didn't call on the telephone. He's not going to tell you if he's got an ounce of sense. I'm going to come tonight. Or I'm going to come whenever. Usually they strike him. But when Jesus comes in the rapture, he will come unannounced. He's not going to announce it. He's not going to send advance warning. He's not going to tell CNN or Fox or any of the news outlets, hey, I'm coming at such and such a time. He's going to come when we totally least expect it. Now let's look here again at, at the thief. What does a thief take? <coughs> Why does a thief come? Well, he comes to take away things of value. Your jewels, your silver, your furs, all that expensive stuff. I'll have to say if he come to my house, he'd have poor pickets. But what does he leave behind? You think a thief is going to come and 
fell and uh, steal mom and dust pail? No. No, he's going to steal the expensive, the valuable stuff. Now, when Jesus comes in the rapture, he will come to get his jewels. Notice that word. Who are his jewels? The born again. The church. We are the jewels of Christ. He's coming to get his jewels. There's a verse in Malachi. In that day when I make up my jewels. Malachi 3.17. Now when a thief comes, <clears throat> he usually leaves more than he takes. Much more. What's a thief going to steal? The vacuums, the jewels, the valuable clothing, valuable whatever. And when the rapture occurs, the children of God, his jewels, will be taken out but there will be more people left on earth than there will be taken out to meet Jesus in the clouds in the air. More will be left, sad. Because not everyone is going to accept Jesus as Savior. And those are the ones that he will come to get. Personally, I'm not going to send an angel, I'm not going to send a prophet, he will come in the air personally. Now Jesus revealed what uh, will take place when he comes in the rapture. I tell you on that night there shall be two men in the bed. One shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. One shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Luke 17, 34 through 36. So imagine two people out in the field doing whatever, and all of a sudden one is taken and the other left. Husbands and wives, one will be taken and the other left. That's the way it be. That's sudden. Uh, surprise. It will be a great surprise. Two men to the two women grinding at the mill to make bread for the day. The women in Bible lands grind their flour in the morning. This speaks of the dawn. Two men in the field signifies later in the morning or in the afternoon. So when Jesus comes, in the rapture, some will be in bed, some will be grinding. Some will be in the field. To the unsaved, a frightening truth is made known here. In each case, listen, one is taken, one is left, two in the bed, one taken. I want to say this, the mass, the majority of the people of this world today do not believe in the rapture of the church and barely believe in God. A lot of them don't say they don't believe in God. And they could care less. They will be uh, left behind. And what we as Christians must do, believe it, if the coming of the Lord is very near, we must do all we can do to warn the unsaved. We must take every opportunity we have to win them to Christ then, and to get them to become Christians before it's too late. The unconcerned attitude of the masses is one of the sure signs that the coming of the Lord is near. People, the unbeliever will say, will scoff at His coming. you saying that He's coming. Where is he? Where is he? Some people will say, I've heard that all of my life. The Lord is not slack, says Peter, concerning his promises. We don't know when <coughs> Jesus is coming. 
but we know how he's coming. We know the manner in which he's coming. It'll be a total, total surprise. And the sad part about it is many will be left. The majority, I believe, will be left. A lot of people say, well, now, brother, can't you be saved during the tribulation? Well, some will, but I believe they'll be mainly Jews. I believe if you have been given the opportunity to be saved during this time of grace, during the age of grace, and you turn it down, I don't think you'll be able to be. Even if you could, it's going to be a lot more difficult time to be saved. Because you'll give your life. Um, when the Antichrist comes on the scene and he fully sets everything up and you get that mark of the beast, then you're gone. And you'll have to have that mark of the beast to buy and to sell. And if you have it, your hope is gone. Behold, today is the day of salvation. We're not promised a tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come. So I hope everyone in this house is saved this morning. If you're not, there's no better time than to come right now.